Hi, my name is Kevin Caffrey, and I'm the Senior Associate Registrar at the University of Mary Washington. In this video, we're going to show you how to add and drop classes in Banner Student Self-Service. From the umw.edu main page, go to the upper right-hand corner and select Menu. Then scroll down, and in the lower left-hand corner, you'll see a link for email under Quick Access. Select that, and that will take you to the next page, where you'll see an icon for Banner at the upper left-hand corner. Banner is the student information system we use. Select that. On your next page, you'll see a link to log into Banner. And on the next page, there'll be a little more information about Banner, and there'll be a choice between Banner, Self-Service, or Banner 9. Since you're a student, select Banner, Self-Service. From there, you're going to see a page that looks a little bit like this. Mine is different because I'm an employee, but you will see a link that says Student and Financial Aid. And once you select that, you'll see a link for registration. Then select Register for Classes. After you've selected Register for Classes, and after you've met with your academic advisor who has lifted your advising hold, you're ready to register for your classes. So from this page, select the term that you wish to register for. In this case, it'll be Fall 2023, and select Continue. From here, you'll be able to search for the classes that you wish to take. It's really easy to search. I know the first course I want to register for is Psych 100, Section 03. So I can simply start typing in Psychology. I can type in the course number field 100, and then I can select Search. So from left to right, you'll see the title of the course, the subject, the course number, the section number, the credit hours, the CRN, which is stands for course registration number. We'll talk about that a little bit later. The instructor, the meeting times, you'll notice that if you hover over that, it'll give you more details about when and where the class meets. The status of the course, whether it's full or not, gen ed or other designations, we'll talk a little bit about that later. And the column on the far right is to actually add the course. So I'm gonna scroll down to section 03, and I see that the class is still available. So I'm going to select Add, and you notice that it kind of makes a little shopping cart for you at the bottom right, and it's in pending status. So let's go to our next course that we want to register for, and that is going to be Accounting 101, Section 5. So in the subject field, I can start typing in Accounting. In the course number field, I can select 101, and I can search, and I know this is Section 5 that I want with Dr. Dave Henderson. Ah, and there it is, Principles of Accounting, Section 05, Dave Henderson, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9.30. And it is available, so I'm going to select Add. And that is added to my shopping cart as well. So I'm going to go back. My next course I want to take is Public Speaking, which is Communications 205. So same concept, Star Typing and Communication. The course number is 205, and this is Section 1 I'm looking for. So I'm going to select Search. Communication 205, Public Speaking. Great, seats are still available. I'm gonna add that to my course, and there it is down there. My next course is Philosophy 110. So you're probably getting the hang of this by now. Type in Philosophy, course number 110. Search. And this is section 01, and the only section, and there's still seats left. So I will add that. And my last course I'm going to register for is my advisor thought it would be a good idea if I try out an online course, and that is Economics 201B. So we have to re-put that into the subject and the course number field. We're going to search, and it is section 01. And you can tell an online course fairly easily because you'll notice there are no, in most cases, there's no days selected because that means this is going to meet asynchronously where the instructor will tell you what the work you have to do each week. If you saw dates there, it might mean that it's an online course that's meeting synchronously where every, for example, Tuesday and Thursday at two o'clock, you might have to meet, but it's online. But in this case, this is an online course that is meeting asynchronously. There are still seats available, so I will add it to my schedule. Now that I've put the five courses I want to register for into my little shopping cart down here, I'm going to select Submit. It 
and now all those pending statuses should change to registered. Now it's a really good idea after you register for your classes to look on the left hand side of your schedule and make sure that everything went through correctly. So on your left hand side, on the schedule tab, you'll see a little calendar where it shows you the classes you're going to take and that you've just registered for. So you see that you have general psych on Tuesdays and Thursdays, principles of accounting afterwards, get a little break for lunch there, and then pick back up with public speaking. And then you also have a Wednesday night course, that is the philosophy course. And then your online course you won't see in your schedule since that is not meeting at a specific day of the week. But if you go to the schedule details tab, it will be there. Notice it's the first one, principles of macroeconomics, and that is online. But from here, you'll see in greater detail the classes that you just registered for. So even though you submitted your registration, you see registered at the status, it's good to look at the class details just to make sure that you selected the courses that you wish to take. Now what would happen if you tried to register for a class that you did not have the prerequisites for, or perhaps you were not allowed to take for another reason? So let's say, for example, there was a course you wanted to take that you did not have the prerequisites for. In this case, it's an advanced sociology course called Death and Society. So this is course number 355. And I'm going to look for it. And there it is. And I try to add it. It's pending here. I hit Submit. And let's see what happens. Errors, preventing registration. So here, right at the top, you'll see what that registration error is. And a prerequisite and test score error simply means that to take this course, you will have had to take in another course, a prerequisite. And if you haven't, the system won't allow you to register for this. So if you really still want to take it, you could reach out to the faculty member, to the department, to academic services, to request to take this course out of sequence or have the prerequisite waived. But if you do not have the prerequisite, banner will not allow you to register for the course. What about if there's a course you'd like to take but it's full but it's using the waitlist feature? Let's say for example you wanted to take business law in the fall but it's full. Let's type in business law. This is we're looking for 201 and section A1. I'm going to search for that. So we're looking for section A1 and that's what Dr. Kim can say. And it is full, but 10 of the 10 waitlist seats that the course is using are open. So when we select Add, and it's pending down here, if you hit Submit, you're going to get a message that says Close, but it's zero are waitlisted. If you still want to go on the waitlist for this course, all you need to do is change this to Waitlisted, hit Submit, and now your status is waitlisted. So a few things to keep in mind when you're waitlisted for a course. It's not truly part of your schedule. You will see that the status is waitlisted as opposed to being registered for a course you've already registered for. How the waitlist works is, if someone drops this course and you're number one on the waitlist, you're going to be sent an email with instructions on how to register, and you'll have a 48-hour window to do so. So if you add yourself to a waitlisted course, it's really important that you regularly check your UMW email account. We suggest you check it at least twice a day if you waitlisted for a course, because if you miss your window, you're removed from the waitlist, and to get back on, you might have a lower uh, number in the waitlist if other people have added themselves to the waitlist after you. So it's really important that if you add yourself to a waitlisted course, that you check your UMW email account. Let's say you wanted to save yourself a little bit of time during the registration process. I mentioned before that each course has a CRN number. And if you have those numbers, before you attempt to register for classes, it'll save you some time. You'll notice that you can select the tab for Enter CRNs. So if you have the CRN numbers of the classes you wish to take, you can simply enter them in here. So if I was going back to do this, I could start entering them in here, making sure that the courses I wish to take come up. Made a mistake there, but that's okay. There it is. And, 
and I could simply add those to the summary, and if those courses weren't here, they would be added, and I hit submit, repeat the process, and you can register that way as well. Now I showed you the relatively simple way to search for classes, but we have an advanced search feature as well that many students find helpful. So if you select your Find Classes tab, and select Search again, scroll down for an advanced search. And that basically just gives you greater options. So rather than just typing in the subject or typing in the course number, you could look by gen ed description. So let's say you were looking for an after Mary Washington course and you selected that and you select the search. It'll show you all the courses that have the after Mary Washington designation attached to them. So you could review this way if you wanted to take an after Mary Washington course. Other options include uh, if you were looking for a specific course, like maybe you wanted to take an online course with synchronous meetings, an online course where it's going to meet once a week online, you could choose to select the courses that have that designation. Other good features are by instructor, by gen ed category like we discussed. Perhaps you want to take a course in a specific building, you could select that way to look at what courses are being offered in, say, Monroe Hall. Part of term, we do have eight-week sessions, so some students would want to search for what courses are being taught in the first eight weeks. And you can also search by meeting dates. Maybe you're just looking for courses on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if you select Tuesday and you select Thursdays and select search, it's going to bring up all those courses that just meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So a really helpful feature is the advanced search feature when you're working on your schedule. And the last thing that I'd like to talk about today is how to drop a course. So let's start from scratch. Let's see, you've already made your schedule and a couple weeks pass by and you decide, you know, I think I've bitten off a little bit more than I can chew with 15 credits. I'm going to go back down to 12 credits. I'll still have full-time status, but it'll be a little bit more manageable. So if you went back to registration and register for classes, same concept, select the term that you're looking to drop a course from. And now you'll see all your courses down here in the lower left hand side. Let's say we want to drop the site course. From the action drop down menu, select drop web, which simply means that you're dropping this from the web as opposed to coming in person and having someone in our office do it. If you hit submit, you're going to see that the status has gone to deleted. And also, like I said before, go to your schedule on the left and make sure that the course came off. Yep, it's no longer there. We're now starting our day at 9.30 with Principles of Accounting. You can also select Schedule Details and make sure that it's not showing up there as well. I no longer see Psych, so I'm good to go. So basically this video should show you how to add and drop classes using Banner Self-Service, but clearly if you ever have any questions, please reach out to your academic advisor or the Office of Academic Services at 540-654-1010 or you can also contact us in the Registrar's Office at 540-654-1063.